Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another reaction video. We got here's exactly why the Falcons drafted Michael Penix. Hey, bro, I, 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 I don't, I don't think there's gonna be a logical explanation for this shit, bro. Because you paid Kirk Cousins four year low at the hundred eighty million dollars or whatever. What the, the fuck was the deal? Um, and then you draft Michael Penix in the first round. And nigga who's like, what, 24? He's going to be 28 by the time he's able to start um, in the NFL for you guys, bro. So um, I don't, I really don't know what the hell they're doing right now. But um, let's go ahead and check this out. Michael Penix Jr., the draft pick that shocked all of us fans, analysts, and even the NFL yeah, teams. Yeah, bro, I was shocked was like a motherfucker. Because be. I thought they were drafting Dallas Turner, bro. 100%. I had that locked in my mind already, bro. Like, and then, then they drafted Michael Penix, bro. Like, come on now. Now, if, now, if they wouldn't have drafted Michael Penix, the Raiders probably would have jumped right on that. But, bro, I just still don't understand why in the hell they drafted Michael Penix Jr. right after signing Kirk Cousins. It just doesn't make sense to me. Everyone seems to hate because the Falcons have a franchise QB already and one that cost them a hefty price tag. With that, man, the Falcons had a rare opportunity to pick another deadly weapon of Roma Dunze or a real difference maker at edge or corner. The Falcons had a golden opportunity and they decided to go against the grain to zig and not zag with their high draft pick. Why did the Falcons do what they did? Let's find out. Remember this clip from the draft? What seemingly was Arthur yeah, Blank, was trying to explain the Falcons demanding an answer as to why the GM decided to draft a QB with their pick is completely the wrong narrative. Arthur Blank was on board of this long before the draft even took place. But why would he be? He just dropped $180 million on a top 12 quarterback. They have some great pieces on offense and with a splash move at defense, they are contenders. While the Super Bowl is the ultimate goal for Arthur Blank. He just had to endure, in his eyes, two way too long years of miserable quarterback play. See, for Arthur, since owning the Falcons, he has had elite caliber quarterbacks to keep the team relevant with Michael Vick and Matt Ryan. And it wasn't until Matt Ryan demanded to leave town that they no longer had that elite viable QB play. Which if you didn't already know, Ryan wanted to leave after the team tried to send a haul for Deshaun Watson. Wow. This left the Falcons in an unusual place with no QB in sight and no true succession plan. Which then led to the Falcons finding themselves with Marcus Mariota and a third round QB that everyone knew wasn't the guy. And so for the 2022 and 2023 didn't seasons, traded the quarterback too? play was atrocious. This is with having a pretty good offensive line and some high top level talented playmakers. And so this explains the massive move for Kirk Cousins. Arthur Blank and the GM went straight for the top QB in the market, even going as far as tampering to ensure their success. Following up wow. with guaranteeing the future at QB with Michael Penix Jr. Arthur Blank got his reassurance that there will be no QB issues. Wait, so this might be a stretch, bro, because of the fact that there's rumors of them tampering. Is that the reason why they drafted Michael Penix? Future mm. case closed. But this doesn't explain the decision to draft Penix where he was drafted. The Falcons easily could have gotten that blue chip player with their pick and taken a developmental swing at QB in the later rounds like with Spencer Rattler or even Jordan Travis. While yeah. that is a fine process to go about in the draft, the Falcons were ahead of the game with their move, seeing into the future of the possible pitfalls they could have made and probably would have made. Honestly, the move to pick Penix was a galaxy brain move on the Falcons part. See, let's think for a minute. We know who Kirk Cousins is. He is a really, really good quarterback. And lately with a little Jay Jetta's help, he is playing the best ball of his career. Given the playmakers the Falcons have and Drake Glendon, who is a elite wide receiver one potential. Kyle they Pitts, Kyle one of the Pitts, greatest yeah. tight end prospects. They traded for um, Darnell, Darnell Mooney and Rondell Moore. 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 upside wide receiver two with elite speed. And Rondell Moore as a slot guy. The way got Bijan. Bijan Robinson as well. One of the greatest running back prospects. Yeah, I feel like that's like the only thing they needed was a, a um a good quarterback, bro, to really round out that offensive playmakers they already had, bro. And with the offensive line that looks pretty solid right now, I feel like they they definitely might be contenders for the playoffs. And this shit, they might even win that division this year. I mean, obviously the Bucks might be the favorite just because they just won the division, but I would not be surprised if the Falcons won it. Adrian Peterson, and for funsies. Tyler Algier, who is just a simply a great running back. 
That is a ridiculous amount of offensive talent. And honestly, we could be talking about the best in the NFL, given age. Not to mention, the Falcons have a sneakily good O-line. It's nothing fancy, but they mow down people in the run game at least. So Kirk Cousins That's is going what I to noticed be cooking with this offense. Especially being with Chris Lindstrom in leading the charge. To what the Vikings run with Kevin O'Connell. Zach Robinson, the offensive coordinator for the Falcons, runs practically the same thing, with variations of course, of that McVay tree. His Falcons team is going to be winning a lot of games, with an offense that could be lighting up scoreboards. In a way, they saw him do with Matty Ice in the MVP run. All that to say, their draft pick is not going to be very high, and really for as long as Kirk Cousins is on the team. When you're a deep playoff contender like the Falcons are going to be, you're just not going to be in the spot that they were in this past 2024 draft. That is, unless you send an absolute haul of draft picks to get up and draft a guy, which one is never a guarantee, and two, at that point when Cousins time is over in Atlanta, the team is going to have to figure out who they're going to pay and who they're trading or even letting walk. So to take all those draft picks to get a QB later on is not going to be worth it when Cousins contract would be done down the road. It costs them a first round pick now, which frees up all those picks down the line to replenish the roster. And they got a pretty good prospect with their pick. You may question though, a pretty good prospect doesn't equate to seventh overall pick given where he was on the consensus board. But the Falcons don't think Penix is just a pretty good prospect. The Falcons think Penix is one of the best QBs in the draft. We know for ourselves that among our friend group or perhaps fantasy football group that we all have various and sometimes polarizing takes on how good a player, team, or individual is. Like my polarizing take that Josh Allen is going to be a flop in fantasy this year. It's obviously no different for NFL teams with putting together their own draft boards. Each team is doing its own scouting and film sessions on so many players with draft time coming around. The scouts, coaches, and front office group all come from different backgrounds as well having different successes. One GM may have a bias because he drafted a player with specific attributes that may not normally work well in the NFL, but for that player, it was a grand slam. And so he's going to pick the same. But Falcons, they had to have Michael Penix Jr. as a QB2 in the draft. Penix was their guy. And since he was their guy, of course, they're not going to care if it's that high of a pick. Him being QB2 yeah. is not as crazy as it sounds. Because in the college football playoffs versus Texas, Penix answered all the questions that people had about his game. Similarly, CJ Stroud did the same against Georgia in the college football playoffs, challenging all the so-called weaknesses to his game. But by the, showing but, otherwise, um, Texas didn't really have the best defense, defense like Texas Michigan had or Georgia. Georgia defense, but so they were you know, can you, we can, we saw how how much Penix struggled against Michigan in the um national championship game. So you know, what I'm saying, is he good enough to go against elite college? defenses no no bro you know what i'm saying because it didn't show you know what i'm saying when, when they went against michigan last year the caveat is that Penix crushed the texas defense and continue into the playoffs to face michigan and lose while stroud lost against georgia despite playing at a ridiculous level but if we change the narrative that washington lost against texas but Penix still played out of his mind we would have been talking about Penix as the second qb off the board or at the very least in the conversation with daniels and may the falcons must have looked at that texas game and really like what they saw it was enough to convince them that Penix Penix's weaknesses are not what they were made out to be originally, and really that he is a top caliber QB prospect. Don't forget too, the Falcons were not the only ones eyeing Penix. The Raiders, Saints, and Seahawks were all teams trying to trade into the top 10 to get Penix. So the idea of waiting until the second round to get Penix was not going to happen. They had to do it there. And honestly, I would have done the same thing. For the Falcons, their evaluation of Penix was obviously much higher than the general consensus. The Texas game convinced them of his real potential and they're in a perfect spot to draft Penix above the teams that really wanted him the Falcons didn't have to lose picks to make that happen and again when a player is your guy when you truly believe in him it's not going to matter what it takes to get him and it took their own high first round pick to get their guy for the future but there's something else that's not being discussed enough when discussing why the Falcons drafted Penix despite 
having her cousins. It wasn't too long ago that the end of a career for a QB was in his late 30s. And it wasn't until Tom Brady absolutely shattered that reliable measure of when a QB is quote unquote done that yeah. teams started to rethink that. But even though Brady was playing until he was 45 years old. I mean, Brady didn't take that many hits that either. To he always had a good offensive line around him. Rivers, Matt Ryan, Ben Roethlisberger. Romo, Breeze, Peyton, and Eli Manning all retiring in that span or at least falling off. There is a possibility that Cousins will do the same because on average a QB falls off in that time span. And Kirk Cousins is about to turn 36 years old in August. It's not to say he's falling off right now, but it certainly is a possibility. That being said, the Falcons had to take into account his age. They can't just rely on him being physically there for the next four years. I mean, but yeah, Penix sir. isn't even better, bro, because he's already 24. He's already 24 years old, my nigga. Like, that is so old for a rookie, and especially a rookie QB, when you've got some guys that have, you know what I'm saying, already been in the league longer than him, are just, some of them are like 22, you know what I'm saying, 21 years old, 23, way younger than Penix, and Penix is just getting into the league and he's already pushing almost pushing 30 at this point you know what i'm saying because he's about to turn 25 soon i believe so like bro this this shit it doesn't make sense to me his achilles injury which i know he is a pocket passer but you hear all the time about footwork with qbs not to mention kirk cousin's weakness is mobility outside the pocket the achilles tear is not going to help that and when looking at research in regards to the loss of performance for players after achilles tear it was found that for qbs the injury didn't similarly affect them as it does for running backs and linebackers instead what it did do was limit their mobility and interesting enough it forced some qbs to change the way they throw the football at least it did for dan marino but he was 32 when that happened cousins was 35 years old. We know the older you get, no matter how well you recover and train, it takes longer to recover. And with each injury, your physical performance is affected. There also was a statistical difference between the amount of yards. Music, the music is a little bit loud, my guy. Had, but I disregard this information as raw stats like that vary significantly and they have a lot of uncontrollable factors at play. All being said, to think Kirk Cousins is going to take the Falcons to the promised land about any true plan for a successor based on his age and recent injury is terrible decision making. We have seen already what happens when you go full send on a QB and the train completely derails because it was all or nothing. Drafting Penix is the Falcon's safeguard. In the case for whatever reason, Cousins isn't the same QB after his injury or he falls off a cliff in terms of performance in relation to his age. Yes. He was a high draft pick, but think of it as getting a high quality product that you know will last instead of the cheaper alternative, which you know deep down is not going to cut it for what you need it to be. Plus the Falcons did that already with Desmond Ritter. The last reason it makes sense for the Falcons to draft Penix is something people are somehow some way getting completely wrong. It actually doesn't just include the situation with the Falcons, but every single NFL player. See, when a player signs a deal with a team, the numbers are released out, and we see a guy signed for $120 million, four year deal, and $35 million guaranteed. The assumption is that he will be there for the next four years and get paid mm -hmm. that exact amount. But actually, once he has paid his guaranteed money, he can basically be cut at no cost to the team. The Falcons signed Kirk Cousins to a four year, $180 million deal with a hundred million guarantee. Okay. So the idea that the Falcons will have Kirk Cousins for the next four years until 2028 and he's 40 years old is wrong. It could be if they want Cousins for that long and he wants to stay there, but the Falcons have the option to cut Cousins without being hurt by it financially after year two of the deal. So the Falcons mm. have Cousins for two seasons. Okay. After that, they can cut him or he could leave in theory. Two seasons. I mean, but very you know what I'm saying? But if, if he's being good and winning you games why would you cut them bro you know what i'm saying like that that's the that's the whole fucked up shit about this is the fact that you you sign them for a reason you know what i'm saying to make y'all a contender right now but then you draft michael Penix for the future but say if kirk cousins is an elite QB that takes you to the playoffs in both seasons that he's that he started this year and possibly next year as well and make a deep playoff run do you really want to cut him and then you know what i'm saying Leave it up to Michael Penix, and then what? What if what if Penix is not good, bro? What if he sucks in his first season starting? Then what? Then y'all gonna be looking stupid. Like I just still don't understand this whole situation, bro. Long time. We
We know how Arthur Blank feels about having an elite QB. He did not want to have to possibly go through another period of bad QB Already play. So he wants that safety net. The security of knowing once Cousins is done, they have not only a guy, but their guy at QB that they want. Another thing to consider too, we saw what happened with Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson. The Falcons don't want to be that. They want to avoid that if at all possible. Another thing to be brief is people will say that he is way too old by the time he starts. And yeah, he will be 26, 27 by the time he starts most likely. But that's 10 years of QB play. If Penix is truly that guy, the Falcons will have a decade of elite play out of him. And to have a elite guy to begin with is hard enough. I don't think they'll complain about having 10 years instead of 13, 14 years. Besides, having Penix sit is great for development purposes. Yes, he did play college football for some time, but there is a lot more to his story for why that happened. Besides, the NFL is a completely different game. Any QB usually can't go from college to NFL as a quote unquote complete quarterback. To train under a mind like Kirk Cousins would be very beneficial for him. It's part of a formula that a team that has been using to develop elite QBs for decades now. The Green Bay Packers keep finding elite QBs, but this isn't by accident. Check out the video here. Hey, man, what do you guys think about this whole situation? Y'all let me know down in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Turn on post notifications and notify when I drop another banger video. We're on the road to 300 subs. Time to get there for more banger NFL content like this. And without further ado, I'm out. Gang!